Welcome to the part 3 of the Roger 67 unboxing after being stored away in a damp cellar for 40 years series. We've done the snare drum which turned out beautifully. I do recommend to check out that video first. Then we've done the toms that also turned out awesome. There was some work with the floor tom and the rusty hardware but the end result is very nice. They sound good and they're ready to go. So also recommend to check out uh, that video before moving on to this one where I unbox the kick drum and the cymbals. Well, I'm gonna have to disappoint you straight away by skipping the unboxing part. I did that and there was just so much mold. There were layers upon layers of moldy cardboard and plastic bags. So safety first, I had to carefully remove all that stuff and couldn't uh, manage to make decent uh, footage along the way. But in the end, I got the bass drum out and what I got was this. I was getting kind of worried with the whole moldy box situation, but out came a beautiful drum. Um, and what looks like the most preserved drum out of the bunch. There are some signs of usage. It has some history behind it. Also the muffler is kind of missing, I think. But um, other than that, what a relief. This is a real beauty. The heads that came with the bass drum are a set of pretty unused looking Ludwig um, DB1000 model. And also a 22 inch Ludwig pretty unused looking drum head and a Rogers one that used to be a better head but I really want to keep it as a front head with the logo so I'm gonna try and remove the tape I'm gonna put a new hole here for the mic and it's not gonna be pretty but it's gonna have the Rogers logo so fingers crossed it works Well, this is as far as I can get. The hole is done and looking good. I also bought some new nice looking washers because some were missing. So now it's time to assemble the drum. The logo should be facing towards, not the drummer, but towards outside as you do. So I wasn't thinking at all. Well, not too bad. At first I thought it kind of looks a bit humble or a bit jazzy next to the two rocky and warm toms, but mic'd up, the result is phenomenal. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, what you think. And let's not forget the fact that um, this drum head has really been through a lot 
it should not have a sound in it still uh, but it does um, but yeah anyways uh, this was without anything in the bass drum wide open sound and now let's try with something uh, like a blanket in there let's go with uh, my favorite the Lufthansa blanket <laughs> Well done Lufthansa, it's quite a soft blanket, not very big, uh, still lets the drum to breathe. Uh, sometimes I'll use two, one for each head, but now let's try, uh, let's go one step further with this chunky bath towel and try the more drastic muffling. The wide open sound uh, sounded like a bump or a thunder or something in between. Kind of like the Keith Carlock uh, kick drum sound that I really love. Uh, but to get that out of this kind of bass drum, I'm quite amazed. Uh, and then the half muffle sound, um, or the Lufthansa muffling as you call it, um, was kind of my favorite. Kept the thunder, but kept it a bit shorter for like a musical context so that you can have a band play with you as well because I kind of felt like the Thunder open tuning didn't leave much space for the band but yeah that was kind of my favorite uh, just to pick one um, and then the really muffled tuning uh, to me sounded really 70s typical or um, like Americana or indie kind of thing um, and that was just all that three was the same tuning just different amount of muffling and I'm quite amazed with this drum I can see it as a proper recording <laughs> instrument still uh, nowadays now I'm gonna go back to the medium muffling because that was my favorite and bring out the cymbals and I'm gonna try to recreate the setup that my uncle had all those years ago the only difference being I'm gonna use my hardware because that hardware still needs work and we'll do that later. They are in great shape. It looks like we had a lot of luck with every single piece including the drums. After all, all I had to do was remove the dust and some of the green here and there. I know simple polish was needed, just a bit of cloth and some WD-40 and that's it. Uh, and what they are is what I believe it's a 1973 Paiste 2002 Black Label Sound Edge Hi-Hat and a Ride. And this one, after doing some research, um, I believe it's a Sveltian Constantinople 1950s symbol. Not sure if it's a crash or a ride or a China trash because it sounds kind of like all of those combined, but uh, they are been really taken good care of you can tell um, and also they've been played a lot you can tell um, the only minor issue is there's a small crack happening here at the hole um, and also the hole looks kind of small I'm not sure if I can fit it to any of my cymbal stands uh, but we'll see and now we are all set up the recreation of the final uh, configuration that my uncle used throughout the 70s and a bit later on as he toured all over the world uh, I did cheat a bit I admit I used my own cymbal stand for the ride and kind of composed the tom holder here we do have an L rod that connects this tom with this bass drum mount but for me it was just so much easier to do it like that uh, and to be able to play and try how the drums sound so <laughs> I hope you guys can forgive me about that um, I did have to use the original uh, Rogers uh, cymbal arm 
uh, because none of my hardware fit the extra small uh, symbol hole and you can see that this L shape here uh, fits the bass drum mount and also I'm using my own hi-hat stand and bass drum pedal because like I said it's just so much easier to, to try them out the way like I'm used to and just to focus on the sounds uh, that you know my uncle had decades ago speaking of cheating I also have to show you that I'm using a Vader vintage bomber beater um, primarily because this has been a brand new unused drum head from that era I'm kind of afraid a hard felt beater would leave a mark or God forbid a dent and you know we are trying to uh, sell the drum kit after this so I think that's really important to keep the drum head intact of course it has a softer sound uh, slightly less attack really bomby sounding I must say I, I do love the sound uh, but more importantly I want to keep the drum head intact and brand new And here we are at the end of the unboxing quite a bit of cleaning also a bit of restoration journey as I would describe it I was being a bit worried in the beginning but after everything turned out looking and sounding good I really started to fall in love with them turns out this is one hell of a drum kit and the way it's set up now uh, the way my uncle had it set up when I tried it when I played it it really did take me back to the old days uh, I would describe it as a Motown meets rock and roll meets big band jazz that kind of thing and it's definitely way way different than my modern day maple drum sets but yeah now it's time that we try and sell it hopefully we're gonna find the lucky new owner who's not only gonna appreciate the instrument but also the history behind it I'm gonna include the links in the description also please subscribe to my brand new drum channel 
And if you have anything you might want to add or comment on, please do so below. But yeah, thanks for watching uh, and take care until next time.